today's our leading edge is magic microwaves. So microwaves are a type of electromagnetic wave that is most familiar to us in microwave ovens for heating food. Exactly. But microwaves can do more than that. In fact, cell phones and other devices make use of microwaves too. And now it seems a number of new technologies based on microwaves are coming out. Yes, in 2011 alone, more than 1,000 research papers on microwaves were published. Not only in the field of physics, but in materials science, organic chemistry, and other fields. Scientists around the world are studying what microwaves can do. It's a hot research area. Well, let's see what microwaves can do then. Take a look here. Toki in Gifu Prefecture. This city is famous for its Mino Ware ceramics. Now a revolution is occurring in the 1,300-year-old local ceramics tradition. This is a large gas-fired kiln, long the mainstay of Mino Ware makers. It burns natural gas to fire the ceramics at 1,300 degree temperatures. And this is a state-of-the-art kiln introduced two years ago. Its secret? This gas-fired kiln is also equipped with microwave emitters. But what difference could that make? Let's compare how long it takes the two kilns to finish firing some mugs. The gas kiln is lit. And the microwave hybrid kiln is switched on. Two and a half hours later, the gas kiln temperature is about 300 degrees Celsius. And the microwave kiln? It's already reached 1,000 degrees Celsius. Five and a half hours later, the gas kiln is still only up to 700 degrees. It's really taking its time. But the microwave kiln? It's already done firing. When the kiln is opened up, the mugs are all nicely fired. Our gas kiln firing goes overnight and isn't finished until midday the next day. The microwave kiln takes only one quarter the firing time required by the gas kiln. This huge time saving works out to a 20% to 30% cost savings. How can microwaves heat so quickly? Let's demonstrate. Three blocks of a heat resistant material are placed in a gas heated kiln for six minutes. They are removed and examined with a thermographic camera. They look completely yellow and orange. But when the top block is removed, the camera shows that the one underneath it hasn't heated up. Now the blocks are heated with microwaves. The blocks are examined again, and now they are all heated right through. This ability to heat evenly is particularly desirable for firing ceramics. Heating with gas causes a temperature differential between the surface and interior. If this temperature differential is too large, the piece can break or warp. So firing must be done slowly with the heat rising gradually over many hours. But with microwaves, the temperature rises uniformly so the kiln can be heated up rapidly without causing breakage. Mmm, 
using microwaves to make pottery. Interesting idea. Yes, basically zapping them in a giant microwave oven. But how does that produce uniform heating inside and outside? It's because of something you mentioned earlier. Microwaves are a form of electromagnetic wave. Electromagnetic waves transmit energy with electrical and magnetic components. It is this feature which can be harnessed to heat things. Take a look at this. Think of this as a microwave. Freeze. When we look at a freeze frame of the wave, we see peaks and troughs. Electromagnetic waves have an electrical component in which positive and negative alternate. The peaks are positive and the troughs are negative. How does that generate heat? Let's bring in a water molecule. In water molecules, the oxygen atoms carry a negative charge and the hydrogen atoms carry a positive charge. So now we see the positive and the negative charges attracting, like this. When we put it in motion, it flips. That's right. When the trough of the wave, the negative charge, comes along, the positive pole is drawn to it. In an electromagnetic wave, the positive and negative alternate, so the water molecule is constantly flipping. If one water molecule is spinning around all by itself, no heat is generated. But what if you have a lot of water molecules being hit by microwaves? All the water molecules want to spin, but they can't because they stick to each other. They jostle against each other. This intense vibration creates heat. One of the definitions of heat is, in fact, the vibration of molecules. That is how microwaves can directly heat the interior of things. So in the ceramics being fired, molecules are being vibrated? Yes, it's not only water molecules, but the molecules that make up pottery can be vibrated by microwaves and generate heat too. Fascinating. But that's not all microwaves can do. They are being applied in other surprising fields. Let's watch. Oils are essential to modern life. Japan consumes 150 million tons a year in plant oils alone. Much of the waste oil that results is heavily contaminated with no option but disposal. But Yasunori Tsukahara at Osaka University has succeeded in using microwaves to recycle waste oil. Black sludge has turned into a clear fluid made up of organic compounds called esters. Esters can be reused for making ink and other products. Most impressive! Japan is poor in natural resources, the raw materials for chemical products. This is a significant advance in tapping a currently unused resource for new uses. Here in the studio, we have some waste oil and the esters made from it. This is how sludgy it was originally, and now look how clean it is. What does the black catalyst we saw in the video do? It's a special catalyst that can absorb microwaves, even when it is mixed in with waste oil. Microwaves can heat the catalyst selectively. The heat from the catalyst causes a chemical reaction in the oil that transforms it into esters. There's no need to heat all of the oil, so it makes it more cost efficient. So waste oil that was only good for disposal before can now be recycled. 
Right. Tsukahara, the Osaka University researcher, is continuing his work hoping to develop uses in many different areas, not just chemical products like esters. He also has plans to collaborate with private industry to set up a plant in Southeast Asia in the next couple of years. What makes using microwaves to heat things different from other methods exactly? It offers three things that conventional heating doesn't. First, speed. Mm -hmm. Second, uniform heating internally as well as externally. Third, selective heating. Microwaves only heat certain substances. Using selective heating, researchers are working to make processes that were never possible before a reality. So with selective heating, what substances respond to microwaves? The most obvious one is water. And salted water absorbs more microwaves than ordinary water. Water with table salt dissolved in it? Right. In salted water, you have positive sodium ions and negative chlorine ions, which have dissociated from each other. That dissociation of ions promotes the vibration of molecules we discussed earlier. Other uses of microwaves are also being studied. Let's watch. Hirotsugu Takizawa of Tohoku University and his research group have used the remarkable properties of microwaves to develop a new technology. This demonstration uses a small metal cylinder. Titanium powder is packed around it. It is placed inside a microwave oven. And microwave for 10 minutes. Look what happened! It now has a beautiful golden finish. This is actually a coating that formed when the titanium powder was transformed into titanium nitride. Because of its attractive color, titanium nitride is used for decorative effect on tableware and other goods. And because it is so hard, it is also used on drill bits and other tools. However, conventional methods of applying titanium nitride have a drawback. The problem is, in order for titanium nitride to form, nitrogen atoms must bond to the titanium atoms. But oxygen atoms react so readily with titanium atoms that titanium oxide forms instead. So the process requires oxygen to be removed from the atmosphere first. When using microwaves, however, a strange phenomenon occurs. The oxygen atoms become more easily displaced from the oxide. Chemically, that's called reduction. We've observed that phenomenon experimentally. This is what happens. Under microwave bombardment, for some reason, oxygen atoms bound to titanium atoms break away. This makes it easy for titanium nitride to form. Here we have that metal cylinder coated in titanium nitride. It does have a golden gleam. It looks completely different before and after it's coated. Titanium nitride coating is known for being especially resistant to wear and corrosion. It's most commonly seen as a coating on cutting tools. Any blades with a gold color like that are almost always titanium nitride coated. And because of the golden color, it is also used as a decorative coating as well. Mm. So hitting it with microwaves spreads off the oxygen items? It's a curious phenomenon. As we've been discussing, microwaves are also a type of electromagnetic wave. Take a look. Previously, we looked at the electrical components of the wave, positive and negative. Now we have north and south, the magnetic components. Microwaves are also magnetic, an oscillating magnetic field. There are various theories, but it may be that the oscillating magnetic field 
is what displaces the oxygen atoms in some way. Let's take a look at one place where this technique to create beautiful titanium nitrate coatings is used. Titanium coatings made using microwaves have found medical applications. Koichiro Toatari is a dentist in Kyoto Prefecture. He has been carrying out implant procedures for many years. Implants require the embedding of a titanium post in the gum. However, patients are unhappy when gum recession exposes the silvery color of the implant. So Toatari introduced this microwave device. Titanium implants to be placed in the gums are given an attractive titanium nitride coating using microwaves. Here is the result. The titanium doesn't stand out as much. Patients are much happier with this look. I used to worry about how my teeth looked whenever I talked or smiled. Now I can do both without worrying about it. I'm very happy with the result. Now that's a surprising setting for this technology. Microwaves can be useful in various everyday areas of our lives. Recycling of waste oil, titanium nitride coatings, where else are microwaves used? In making nanoparticles. Nanoparticles are essential in building the ultra-thin circuitry of next-generation computers. They're extremely small metal particles, about a millionth of a centimeter in size. Researchers around the globe are working to develop them, and microwaves are being used to make them. Microwaves seem to have great hidden potential. When we think of heating, we think of infrared radiation, lasers, and so on. But now, microwaves might take center stage as a form of heating. Microwave research is pioneering a new area of science distinct from much of the research on heat done up to now. And researchers are busy coming up with new technologies. For the Icaros space mission, the most difficult part is unfurling the solar sail. The craft is rotated with weights attached to the tips of the sail. Centrifugal force unfurls the sail over a period